What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another FC24 video. Today we're going to be discussing a tweet that went viral yesterday about how EA have lost 60% of its players. This is based on some data scraped from Footbin and it caused an outrage. Not even an outrage, it just went viral in the community. Those of you who have been watching me for some time will know I call good things in this game when I think they're good. I call bad things in this game when I think they're bad. Sometimes I'm wrong with that. Sometimes I think like an SBC or an objective or an evolution is bad when it's good. Sometimes the flip side, sometimes I think something's really good uh, when it's actually bad and maybe it's just good for me or just good for a small pocket of people. Um, but overall, I think one of the things I want for this game and one of the reasons why I, I personally critique the game the way I do, not that I'm some expert at critiquing, critiquing it or anything, but one of the reasons why I do so, so is because I want a good game. First of all, I love FIFA and EA Sports series. You know, I've been playing FIFA since FIFA 98 Road to World Cup. So we're going back now, Jesus, 26 years of me playing this game. And for, so from a gamer's perspective, from somebody who loves football and loves gaming, I obviously want this game to be good, right? But also for my career, it's important that this game is good, right? You know, for, Maybe not in the short term, right? In the short term, you can have a bad game that still gets views. But over time, if it is a bad game and it is losing players, the views will dwindle. The game will just dry up on social media like you've seen with a whole bunch of other games before it. But ultimately, I want a very good game. So the first thing that I, I wanted to just kind of mention about this tweet that went viral is that it was surprising to me to see how many people... Not, not players of the game, because you guys are indifferent. You just want to play a different, you know, you just want to play a good game. Whether, the, whether a FIFA is good or bad is irrelevant to you. You just want to play a good game. But it was surprising to me the amount of content creators that jumped on this whole bashing EA thing when, it, like, when it's due, fair enough. But it's just, it just doesn't make sense to me that people would get at this. And it's, it's like people are almost like, excited for EA's downfall. But if EA's downfall comes at this moment in time, there's nothing left. Yeah, eFootball might be good next year. Probably won't be, but might be good. Yeah, we might get goals or UFL that give some kind of some kind of competition to EA. And maybe FIFA 2K when it comes in probably 2025, maybe that will be a game that gives competition to EA. But surely we should just want the best for this game. Surely we should want to enjoy this game. But I wanted to just talk about the actual tweets that we've got here. And, and I've got, I've, I've picked out on, on a couple. And the original tweet actually got deleted from this person here that you can see, GNX. Uh, they deleted the original tweet, which is basically this information here. And this tweet here is the one that went viral. And it's from Kurlos. And it's got, at this moment of time, 2.4 million views. And it says, breaking, EA loses 60% of its players. And that data that you'll see on screen now is kind of, it's not easy to read because it's not English, but you've got 2023 in the left-hand column, 2024 in the right-hand column, and then you've got some dates. So if we just take the first date, you've got the 1st of February, 2023, and it looks like there's 3.7 million people playing, right? And then on the right-hand side in 2024, on the same day, it looks like there's 1.6 million people playing. And so I saw this, and my first response was, wow, that's surprising. Because even though the online community might have a lot less views or a lot less interaction on this game, your casual, general, generic player doesn't know that the game's broken, doesn't know that certain game mechanics are broken because they don't play the game that way. They don't experience the game that way. So for me to see this and immediately assume that this is a lot of players that have left the game, I was, I was surprised. So what I did in the first instance, I don't know if you'll see, uh, so Michael here responded to this and added me, said, we'd love to get your thoughts on this. I asked, is there an English translation for this? Because my first thought was, I need to actually know what this is like, like responding to. Because I didn't want to just jump on and be like, oh my God, the game's dying, EA need to change because, and I'll stand by this, for me personally, I don't think that this is a very good game. There's parts I like about it and parts I don't like about it. But for EA, this is a very good game. They are making so much more money than ever before. 
based on their sales, they are selling as many copies as ever before. That doesn't mean the daily play, uh, you know, the daily player group is high. They could sell 10 million copies and still only have 100,000 people playing the game every day. But I really wanted to understand what I was looking at and, and I couldn't. So I asked, uh, is there an English translation for this? And uh, Carlos here said, what are you talking about? So I, was, I literally just asked for uh, wanting the data in English. Um, I could have Googled it and uh, tried to figure it out some other way. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was just wondering if there was some English translation for this. And the way that this tweet is kind of created, that's now up to 2.5 million views, we've gained 100,000 views on it since making this video now, is it says EA loses 60% of its players. And the responses are all mostly negative. This is what you get for not fixing, fixing basics like player switching, glitchy menus, etc. Manipulating pack weight so you have to buy points to pack the best promo players. Manipulating weight during team of the year. Constant re-releasing the same play boring players in promos. And the original creator of this tweet, even though it wasn't the original creator of the data, responds with facts. Implying again that this is showing a massive drop off in players. But it's not. And it's really misleading and it's really dangerous because now you've got 2.5 million people that see EA loses 60% of its players, that sees these numbers going down year on year, and then doesn't actually take five minutes to learn and understand what this data actually is and how it's completely untrue in the context of how this original tweet is uh, created. Book Concept says... Before people lose their minds at this, it's almost definitely not 60%. This is based on PGP, which is player game performance data from Footbin. PGP is based on game statistics taken from players on the market. We've seen a huge shift in untradeables, which obviously aren't on the market and therefore cannot track those games. Yeah, the game might have suffered a loss in players. It might not have as well. But you can't use PGP, why is that so hard to say, as the source of the truth. and. This tweet, which is really valuable and offers a lot of context, only has 55,000 views. And here he shows the fact that the original tweet of this uh, has, has been deleted. And when you look at what he actually means, when we go to Footbin and click on PGP, which one was it? Uh, it's, it's right here, player game performance. You can see the number of games played. Right, And the, the data that is on this sheet here is the top 150 or 50 or whatever like meta players. And you can see here, for example, Virgil van Dijk has got 32 million games played. But how many games has Virgil van Dijk got played as an untradeable card? And the reason why that's so valuable and why it means that this tweet didn't really show absolutely anything is because this year we have had more untradeable cards than literally ever before. We've had more untradeable packs than literally ever before, including like 83 by 10 repeatables, 84 by 10s, incredible like uh, reward packs through the season pass or like 84 by 20s and stuff. We've also had more SBCs than ever before, more objective players than ever before, of course, of which are untradeable, more huge icon SBCs. So if we actually look at, um, if we actually just look at, uh, an icon here. Let's go. Let, let's even just take base icons. Let's take Centurion's icons because that Eusebio will be an interesting one. Eusebio is without doubt the most used player, I think, on this game this year. And yet, this Eusebio, in terms of tracked games, is at 286,000. And that is because the tradable ones that go onto the market that allow Footbin to grab the data from don't exist because nobody had him tradable. They all had him untradable. Whereas Javier Zanetti, who's only 125k, or Ronald Koeman, who's only 84k, has got 4.5 million games and 4.7 million games on them. So due to the sheer volume of high-end SBCs, the volume of SBCs and objectives, the volume of untradable packs, it goes without saying that it's incredibly reasonable that the total number of games played that are trackable by tradable cards has significantly decreased. And that is not even including the fact that we have evolutions, which make tradable cards untradable, but also are a massive, massive favorite for people in the game. For me personally, for example, my evolutions team, my, my Evo player, 
who's got the most games is Kai Havertz with over 1,500 games. Most of my Evo cards have got hundreds, if not near a thousand games. And I've not played with tradable meta cards or even tradable cards in general because I built into an untradable team and an untradable club. And that comes off the back of how EA have created this game. And that in itself probably deserves a discussion point, which we won't talk about here today. But it probably deserves a discussion point around how this game is leaning towards being mostly untradeable, which I actually don't mind, but it requires EA to make some quality of life changes within the game, like the exchange, what they have done, but some, some more quality of life changes that allows people to lean into this untradeable side of things and not be burnt every time they get duplicate players or high rate players that they don't actually want to use, but still have significant value in game. For example, if you pack like an untradeable Javier Zanetti, you probably wouldn't care putting him into the exchange because even like, you know, he's not important. If you needed him and ever wanted to buy him back again, you know, and actually use him, he's only 125,000 coins. However, if you packed 91, let's actually find another 90 rated. If you pack 90 rated Jairzinho, who has a market value of 1.3 million coins, you'd probably be way more reluctant to put them into the exchange or into an SBC because you feel like you're missing out on that 1.3 million coin value, even if you'd never actually use that player. So it would, for me, again, this is probably something that requires an, an entirely different video. But I feel like EA need to do a lot if we're leaning towards an untradable based game. And listen, if the market ever goes, I'd be shocked because I don't think people would buy anywhere near as many packs. But it's certainly going towards that. And that is a significant portion of why the amount of games that you can track from tradable cards on the market has decreased significantly, no less because most people have a, a monster SBC team with Hullet, with Eusebio, with Mbappe, with I don't even know who's there right now, but there, there's some really, really good SBCs right, right now in the icon section. Ribery, Makalele, Roberto Carlos, Socrates, Fernando Torres, maybe not. Yashin, definitely. Jairzinho, Cannavaro, maybe not. Baggio and Rijkaard, maybe not. But see these icons here? If you pack a Kevin De Bruyne, or let's, I, I don't even know if we can actually see who the players are on here. We can't. But if you pack a big card, uh, let, let's actually take the current, uh, the current foot birthday team and take a card that's worth some value, right? Let, let's, even, let's take Goretzka. Imagine you pack this Leon Goretzka, but you've already got in your team Roberto Carlos, Socrates, and Makalele, because you've done those SBCs. And you're, you've also got alongside them Bruno Fernandes uh, SBC, Sauer's SBC, Best's SBC, Eusebio's SBC. You might play a game or two of this Goretzka, and then you're probably going to sell it, which means the data that Footbin tracks is this Goretzka has zero or 10 or 20 games. And we can actually use the game it itself as an example of the number of games played for high level cards on the on the game you can just go to the market and look at like van dykes tradable van dykes most of them will have very few games played because most people have got an untradable van dyke that has got hundreds or thousands of games on it so when you pack a tradable van dyke what are you going to do with it you're just going to list it up on the market sell it off and get it gone and so of course there is going to be a way lower volume of played games on top end meta players. There's a few other tweets. Uh, one of them's from uh, Spreadsheet Josh here. It says, just because you might want this to be true doesn't mean it is. This is based on PGP from Footbin that tracks games played on tradable cards on the market. It doesn't take that long to figure out why the, that figure might drop in a year with massive untradable push, which is kind of what I've already uh, described there. And then Chem Expert, today I saw a post with a data spreadsheet image and the caption, EA loses 60% of its players. As untradable players were not included in the data, once again, someone is going viral with just posting misleading information he even stole from a post on someone else. And of course, this guy only put this post up six hours ago, and it had 2.1 million views. I don't quote the post of this dude because I don't want to give him more engagement. In my opinion, he better should delete it, but that's not the point of my post. What I want to tell you basically is it's not the real deal to believe in everything random guys are posting without questioning at least a little bit. And... That is where, as a, as a kind of like notion towards before, that's where this is dangerous in many regards because this has got 2.5 million views. 
And so how many people are just going to look at this, believe it, and now the narrative is going to become people going into people's streams and saying, Nep, Bates, Orzio, Nick, run the foot market, Nick, Fireface, what skills, Zway, what do you think about the fact that EA has lost 60% of its players? And then we're going to have to have that, that debate every day to, to explain it's, they haven't lost 60% of the players. It's just based on number of tradable cards. And then what follows from that is, are oh, these EA shields. They just can't accept reality that this is a bad game. And this, this game has bad parts about it. And this is why I preface this at the start, as I'm somebody that will, when I see something good in this game, I will say I think it's good. When I see something bad in this game, I'll say I think it's bad. Sometimes I'm not on the money with those, but it's just my honest like, opinion in that moment. And now because of this, we're gonna, this is going to be like, also, this is going to be like scripting handi handicap and momentum. This is going to be like DDA. This is going to be like the, the EA patent and things like that, where people just blindly take this information, believe it to be true, run with it as a narrative to crap on the company that creates the game that we're all still playing. And I will just, I will just urge people, right? Let's, instead of crapping on EA for things that aren't true and don't make sense and aren't important, Let's call them out for the things that are important and do need to be worked on because that's how we'll get a better game. We won't get a better game by constantly pushing lies because EA's in-house are going to be sitting there going, well, we just have factual evidence that that's not true. So this doesn't matter to us. But if we actually got something that had value, that was important, that could get changed and that got pushed and got, you know, two and a half million views on a tweet and then a massive community fallout, we could actually push for some change in the things that we would like that would be important to our experience on the game rather than sitting there feeling giddy because EA are going down the pan when the data is not even true. Anyway, I've actually rambled now. I did not. I, I honestly thought this would be like a five to ten minute video at most because there's not a lot to talk about here opposed from the fact that this data is misleading. It is real data, but it is entirely misleading to the point here of this. Uh, EA haven't lost 60% of its player base. I think we'd see a lot more happening differently in game if it had. But let me know what you think down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. I'm out. Peace.